Okay, so here's some stuff that we know. CH4, there's a formula for methane gas, and there's a Lewis diagram for it right there. We know that if we build it, we're going to have, that's four effective pairs around the central carbon, and each one is a bond to a hydrogen, we've got a tetrahedral shape. Okay, now, this tetrahedral shape, if you're in tune here to what we've been talking about, now you're thinking, well, you know what? Since carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, not really though, what carbon likes to do in its box diagram here, it likes to kick an electron from the 2s to the 2p so it can have 1, 2, 3, 4 lone electrons available in these orbitals. Hey, guess what we do? We bond a hydrogen to each one of these orbitals to get CH4. Four valence orbitals here, 1, 2, 3, 4. There they go. The hydrogen donates its electron and shares it in between an s orbital and three p orbitals. You know what that means? Then? That means then that one of these is an overlap of hydrogen to an s orbital, a two s orbital of carbon, and then the other ones are two p orbitals. But that would mean then that three of the bonds are alike, and one of them is different, has a different nature or character because of the different shape of the s orbital to the p's. No. And <laughs> what really happens is that all of these bonds are entirely equivalent. If they're entirely equivalent, that means then that there isn't an s and three p's. Well, it does, but here's what happens. We take the 1s orbital and the 3p orbitals and we stick them together and we come up with 1, 2, 3, 4 equivalent orbitals when they bond. And so we say that those four valence orbitals come together, 1s and 3p's, and hybridize into one distinct type of orbital. So, four effective pairs around a central atom means that that central atom has sp3 hybridization. So, CH4 has sp3 hybridization. NH3 would be this with a lone pair on top. So it's got four effective pairs. When you see four effective pairs, that means that the bonds are all equivalent and the valence orbital that this is in is equivalent to these orbitals here. That's called sp3 hybridization around the central atom. Now, here's ethene. Okay, that's C2H4. Remember that you count multiple bonds as one, so this has one, two, three effective pairs. When you have three effective pairs, the shape around that central atom is trigonal planar. Well, this is also a central atom, so it's also got trigonal planar shape. Okay, trigonal planar and three effective pairs around the central atom is going to mean that you have sp2 hybridization. Here's what that means. 1s and two of the p orbitals get together and they form three equivalent orbitals. But that means then that there's one other p orbital that doesn't hybridize. Here's what it all looks like. Here's CH4 and here's the Lewis diagram. Here's, uh, here's a diagram that has one, two, three hybridized orbitals, 1s and 2p's hybridized together to make a 120 degree separation and that's what we get in the trigonal planar shape. So this carbon has it and this one has it too. The bond to one of the 1s orbitals of hydrogen here with a hybridized orbital and a hybridized orbital here and a bond to the other carbon with another hybridized orbital. But it's got a double bond. Where do you get the double bond from? This whole green here, this and this together, is the double lobe, which makes one orbital. That is the unhybridized orbital for this carbon and the unhybridized here. They have one electron in them each, just like all these orbitals all around here have. This forms another bond and makes up one bond. This makes up the other, and you get the double bond. One of the bonds in a double bond is always a hybridized one, and one of them is always an unhybridized. And this is called, because it is the unhybridized orbital, it's called a pi bond. And this one, because it's a hybridized orbital, is called a sigma bond. So you've got sigma and pi. Now if you had a triple bond, oh, 
that's coming. A triple bun gives you a linear shape, but you've only got two effective pairs. So when you've got a carbon bond to a carbon with a triple bond, hydrogen's at the other end, that's ethyne, then you're going to have one, two, three, well, that's one effective pair, and one, that's two. That gives you a linear structure, and two effective pairs is sp hybridization. Okay, now, what is that? That's a, a pi bond here and here. They're from unhybridized orbitals. Remember, there's four of the orbitals. There's one S and one P here. They hybridize, and that is one of the hybridized orbitals here for carbon, another one here, and one in the middle to bond to the other carbon. But there's two unhybridized P orbitals. One forms a bond, and one forms another bond to get the triple bond. So there's your hybridization for all the simple ones, and then come five effective pairs and six effective pairs. When you've got five effective pairs around a central atom, like phosphorus has here, what kind of hybridization does that have for all of these bonds? Well, look, if you've got five, you've got, well, an S orbital and three P orbitals all coming together to hybridize it, but that's only four orbitals, and you need five here. So what actually happens, remember, we can exceed the octet rule because of the presence of D orbitals. So one d orbital has to come into the mix in order to then amalgamate with the 3s, the 1s orbital, and the 3p orbitals to whoop, form five hybridized orbitals. So one of the d's and one s, but three of the p's. And this is called DSP3 hybridization. So all you have to remember is when you have five effective pairs, the hybridization is DSP3. One, two, three, four, five. You should be able to count up, right? For six effective pairs, you're going to have an S orbital, three P's, and two D's. And so, they amalgamate to form one type of hybrid orbital, two D orbitals, and S and three P's. D, two, S, P, three, two, three, four, five, six hybridized orbitals. And that is the various types of hybridization that you can have. Hybridization. Woo.